Peter. Peter was saying it. Here he is. The man, the myth, the legend. Peter. And who was Peter? He was a disciple. He was a disciple of who? Jesus. All right. And Peter? No, I just want you to pay attention. So, here's Peter. And Peter is also with? This is after Jesus. This is after Jesus died, resurrected, and then he sent the disciples out to go and preach the gospel. So now Peter and John are walking to the temple, and they're they're going where they're going. And then they see this guy on the side. He's on the side, and he's on the side of the road next to the temple, and he's a cripple. So that means he can't walk and he's can't work or anything. Do you have a question? The cripple's on the side of the road, and the cripple, he can't walk, he can't work or anything, so he just has to stand around begging for money so that he can even have enough food to eat, right? So he's stuck there, and Peter and John walk up, and the Bible says they looked at him intently. So they walk up to him, and they're like looking at him. And then the guy, the cripple's standing there like expecting something from him because they're like standing staring at him. And then Peter says, I don't have any money to give you, what I do have is Jesus. Stand up and be healed. And he grabs the guy from the, by the hand and lifts him up, and the guy's completely healed. And he could stand. He could stand, he could walk, he can run. He was completely healed. There's a picture of him jumping for joy. He's super happy now. But that looks nothing like the thing before. Imagination. Yeah. So. Looks like he's he needed to the Let's say he he got a he got new clothes. Now he's all fine. He's all better. So Jesus, the name of Jesus, is what healed that guy. So then this guy's stoked. He's super happy. So then they leave and then they start. They make it all the way to the temple. Change scenes here. There's the temple. So now Peter and John are in the temple, and then there's the guy, and then there's also a ton of people. Can we put all the people out here? Oh, can I help? I just want you to watch. So all the are people there, are why here. Why is everybody bigger than him? So now there's all these people. But what happened after this guy got healed is he was super happy because he had been a cripple and couldn't walk or anything for his whole life pretty much. So now he's so happy that he can walk and that Jesus healed him. So he's like jumping up so happy and all these people knew who he was because he was always there for like 20 years. He was just sitting there at the temple begging for money. So they all knew who he was and they saw him walking around completely fine. He's like jumping up and down because he's so happy. And so they're like, wait, what happened? And so then that's when Peter and John, they walk in front of everybody and they tell them, they tell everybody what happened to this guy, to the cripple. And they tell him, Jesus healed him. It wasn't through our power. It wasn't through what we can do. But it was through the name of Jesus that this man was healed. But, so then everyone started rejoicing and praising God. But then the Pharisees, the Pharisees got jealous. The Pharisees come in. And they get mad. They get mad at Peter and John. It was the Pharisees. Why is he patterning on the back, by the way? He's not. He's not. So the Pharisees come and confront Peter and John. Because the Pharisees were the ones that crucified Jesus. The Pharisees hated Jesus because they were jealous of him. Well, so see, the true power of God, they don't so like him. So then the Pharisees go and take Peter and, uh, Peter and John into like a back room. gone. And there's a bunch of Pharisees. So they all go. They go into the back room. And they kind of like, they try to arrest Peter and John. So now, there's all the Pharisees. Right here. And then they start 
start telling Peter and John, we don't want you guys to talk about Jesus anymore. If you guys talk about Jesus, we're going to whip you guys and beat you guys up. So normally, Peter and John, or other people, might have gotten scared like because they saw Jesus get crucified. They saw people get beat and stuff. But they weren't scared because they knew that Jesus would give them strength and the Holy Spirit would strengthen them to do what God asked them to do. So they tell the Pharisees, we're not going to do what you tell us to do. We're going to continue to tell everyone about Jesus because people need to get healed. People need to get saved. There's salvation under no one else, so they have to tell everybody. And the Pharisees get mad and they try to threaten them even more, like, we're going to whip you guys. Um, but the Pharisees couldn't tell them to stop. So then they leave. Jesus in other countries, I would be killed for that. 
And so that's what was happening when the disciples were alive. So they were praying to God to give them boldness to tell everyone about Jesus. And they said, stretch out your hands with healing power. And they're asking God that miraculous signs and wonders would be done through them. That when they prayed for people, they'd be healed and things like this. And it says, after they prayed, where they're meeting, the whole place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And it says that God gave them boldness. Does anybody know what boldness means? What is boldness? Has anybody? Yeah. Boldness, not boldness. Give, give, yes. Kelly? Um, help mom and dad. Good guess, but not really. Last one, that'll say. Uh, I, I think boldness means like, um, Yeah, it's hard to describe. Yeah. Yeah. So, have any of you guys ever had to get up and talk in front of a lot of people? Oh yeah, my, my and dad did that yesterday. Yeah, and you're kind of scared. I don't get scared. Are you kind of scared? That's good. It's like the opposite of embarrassment. I passed yeah. out when I'm you're, in front maybe of you're crowd. kind of afraid to talk I about something. That would be though. boldness. So, or that's being I'm afraid. Boldness is out. that you're able to get up there and you're able to talk and you're not afraid of being embarrassed or what other people think or anything like that. You're just like brave. Boldness means brave. You're courageous. You're boldness. courageous, you're brave. Boldness. That's what means boldness. Brave. And it says that God gave all the disciples boldness. All the disciples so, brave. How do we apply what the disciples did back then to our lives? If we read the Bible and then just like put it on other people, we won't grow. But if we apply it to our own lives, then we can grow and be changed. So, who in here has ever told their friends about Jesus? Some of you? That's good. Yeah. So, the point of this message is to tell other people about Jesus. And that Jesus will give you boldness to tell your friends. In other countries, people will be martyred. Hey guys, that's okay. In other countries, people be martyred for Jesus. Martyred is pretty much they get murdered because of preaching the gospel. In other countries, yeah, they'll put people in jail for life for believing in Jesus. In China, in China, if you get caught bringing Bibles into the country, they will take take all the Bibles, destroy them, and either put you in prison or kill you. So here in America, we have it really easy. And I don't want to scare you guys or anything like that. But I just want to say that we have to tell our friends about Jesus. Because if we don't tell them about Jesus, they won't be saved. They won't go to heaven. And it's up to us to tell our friends and people we know about Jesus. Sometimes it's been hard to tell my friends about Jesus because I might be afraid. Oh, what will they think about me? They might think that I'm weird. I don't care what whatever. people think. I'm already Good. weird in the school. Exactly. So just tell them about Jesus, and you got. I'm already weird lose. everywhere. And if you don't know what to say to your friends, just invite them to church. Okay. All right. I want everyone, real quick, close your eyes. Okay. Everyone, close your eyes real quick. Now think of one friend that you have or one family member that you know that yeah. hasn't given their heart to Jesus. That was. So, you got me in your head right now. We're going to pray for them. We're going to pray for them right now, okay? Lord, everyone in here right now has someone that they're thinking of that they know that they care about, that they love, that doesn't know you. And Lord, I pray that you get everyone in here boldness to go and tell them about you and that you, Jesus, died for that person's sin. All right, everyone, open your eyes. Now, next time you see that person, tell them about Jesus. Good question.